is uh, Abhinash Sharma from ISA Tiruvananthapuram and uh, he will uh, speak to us on L regular partitions through the lens of theta functions and Heck eigen forms. Abhinash. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning to all. So yeah, so this will be the overview. First I'll just uh, state few definitions and the main results and then I'll move on to the proofs. So first part, let's define partition as uh, I guess it's uh, familiar to many of you. Let n be a fixed positive integer. A partition of n is a non-increasing sequence of positive integers whose total sum is n. For example, if we pick four, we can uh, write four as sums of uh, positive integers in this following manner. Uh, next, we move on to regular partition as mentioned in the title of my talk. So for a fixed positive integer n, we call a partition of n to be L regular if none of its parts is divisible by L. So parts means once you write a partition, it's a, a component we call as parts. Let's denote uh, by this B sub L of n, let it denote the number of L regular partitions of n and uh, by convention we assume that the number of L regular partitions of zero is one. Or any year. Again, if we go back to the same example of four, here we can see that uh, the second and the last partitions are two regular partitions of four. And except for the second one, all others are three regular partitions of four. So B2 of four is two and B3 of four is four. So this is the, the definitions. And we can make a bit uh, a few immediate observations. First one is the generating function of the regular partitions of n. Uh, this is given by this formula. So summation n zero to infinity, VL of n q power n is FL over F1, where FK is defined by this infinite product. So uh, please note here that one over F1 is the generating function for the general partition function. Now, by definition, we want to factor out those factors. We want to cancel out those factors who are contributing, uh, who are contributing to parts divisible by L. So we have to put them on the numerator. That's why FL will come on the numerator and uh, we'll get L regular partitions as coefficients of Q raised to the N. And uh, one easy observation, another uh, observation. So in this product, if I take here L to the power R for any prime L, then by binomial expansion and uh, by, the, uh, by binomial expansion, one can easily conclude that once you go mod L, this F L raised to the R is congruent to F1 raised to the L raised to the R. So with these observations, uh, this will, become, uh, will come handy while proving. So let's move on to the main results. So first theorem states for any n k non-negative, if my integer is of this form, then the number of 17 regular partitions. So basically it's a kind of a recurrence congruence relation mod 17. So if the integer is of this form, then it will be the number of 17 regular partition of that integer will be congruent to uh, two raised to the power k times number of 17 regular partition of n itself. And further, if we take R to be one of these four values, then I, we actually get a 17 divisibility. So the number of 17 regular partitions of integers of this form will be divisible by 70. So please note here that this is a sufficient condition. That means if n is of this form, then 17 divides this. Second theorem is also similar. It's uh, except for here, I, we are considering 23 divisibility of 23 regular partition of certain form of integers. So the third theorem is a bit different. It's a if and only if condition. Uh, so we are putting a necessary and sufficient condition on N or three divisibility of nine regular partition. So the theorem states that number of nine regular partition of n is divisible by three 
if and only if one of the following two conditions hold where this this term this uh, notation uh, denotes the highest power of p that divides 3 and plus 1 so basically here we are giving a necessary and sufficient condition on n so that 3 divides b9 of n and i would like to mention here that we have also established necessary and sufficient condition similar to theorem 3 for 3 divisibility of 27 regular partitions as well but to even state the theorem uh, i need i i'll need to uh, add, uh, introduce a few notations that's why i'm skipping it here but if time permits after the at, at the end of the talk i'll uh, quickly uh, explain how we can get similar uh, criteria for 27 regular partitions. Okay, so we move on to the proof part. So let's uh, look at how we prove the first theorem. So again, I state the theorem again, just to uh, remind you. So this is the theorem. Let's uh, prove it. So first, by the immediate observations we made after the definition, so this this is uh, the generating function which is f17 over f1 and if we go mod 17 that will give us f1 raised to the 16. for this function rq defined thus watson proved the following two identities actually these were stated initially by ramanujan and then watson proved them in these two uh, papers, which I have mentioned as reference. So first identity uh, relates F1 and F25. And the second identity relates F1 and F5. And we will need one more result. So uh, from these two results and using a uh, so simple polynomial division technique, we can get uh, another result, which relates F1, F5 and F25. This is the result. Now, having these three identities, we can move on now. So let's replace F1 uh, with this right hand side here in the relation three. So we'll get this one. Now, if we expand this, I'm not uh, writing the expansion and all completely. We will expand this and we'll use a trick. The trick is after expanding, I'll extract the terms involving Q raised to the five and plus one on both sides of the conference. Hence, we will get here B17, 5 and plus 1. And then I'll st again, you know, kind of standardize the power of Q. So first I'll divide by Q since 5 and plus 1 is there. Uh, and then I'll replace Q by Q raised to the 1. I mean, basically, yeah, so Q power 5 will be there that I'll replace by Q. Uh, remember, this congruences are uh, satisfied for any Q for mod Q less than one. So I can uh, blindly substitute Q by Q to the one, one upon five. So after getting that, after uh, doing this, I'll regroup or rearrange the term on the right hand side into a kind of polynomial expression in this uh, uh, this this expression why because if you look uh, closely on this uh, second identity if i get this somehow i can replace again by f1 power 6 over f5 power 6 and precisely that's what we are doing here and i'll replace it by f1 power 6 by 5 power 6 and we'll get this now once we get here i can again you know go back to replace f1 using my first identity and we can carry on and if you closely notice here the powers of f1 are decreasing and at one or two steps we may get you know one upon f1 so negative powers of f1 and to take care of that we have this third result which is for one upon f1 so with this i'll continue this process i uh, actually i don't have to continue maybe two, uh, another two or so iterations I'll finally get this result and I'll rearrange the similar term. Similar term since means, for instance, this will give me say uh, F1 18 upon F5 square. Again, this term will also give me, uh, not this term. 
yeah for instance say, say this term this will give me f1 12 into f5 power 4 and uh, this term will also give me f1 12 i think there is a typo i mean you can uh, rearrange the similar terms so i think at just a moment yeah there i think there is a typo regarding the power so i'm sorry for that uh, you can take you can uh, do the needful and rearrange the similar terms similar terms mean similar powers and you will get this uh, this congruence now this for b17 5n plus 1 qn we have already this uh, relation so i'll simply put this right hand side here and once again if we rearrange the similar terms we can see that other coefficients vanishes once you go mod 17 only this thing is left once you get this now you can compare coefficients of q raised to the power 5n plus 3 and you will get this recurrence relation for number of 17 regular partitions now this is the first step and you can move on with the induction hypothesis and you'll get the general result instead in this relation, if we compare coefficients of say q power 5n plus r, are different from 3, 0, 1, 2, or 4, then you actually get a, this right hand side now becomes 0. So you get a 17 divisibility for those uh, integers. And then again, by similar uh, induction argument, you can get a general result. Uh, you, you actually get an infinite family of integers for which this divisibility holds. Uh, the proof of theorem 2 also goes in the similar way, only it may require a bit more iterations. So I won't uh, present it here. But the thing to men uh, mention here once again is these are only sufficient conditions. It means if n is of this form, then 17 divides this. Now, next. Theorem 3 is, again I'll mention, it's a sufficient and a necessary condition. So how to prove it? Yeah, so you may ask that those were like 17 divisibility, these are 3 divisibility, but yes, it's a work on progress. If we can, I hope we can get some uh, equivalent criteria for 17 divisibility of 17 regular partition, then it would be great. So let's move on to the proof before uh, Moving on, I'll first uh, introduce the Dedekind's eta function, which is defined in this manner. And again, this is by the generating function observation that b9 and qn, it's uh, f9 over f1. Then if you go mod 3, f9 becomes f1 raised to the 9. So we get f1 power 8. And we can conclude that once you make necessary uh, suitable arrangements, you get this congruence mod 3, that with B9N of Q3N plus 1 is actually congruent to, this congruence is like coefficient wise congruence, eta power 8, 3z, mod 3. Now, let's look at some uh, interesting fact about eta power 8, 3z, which were proved by Sir in this paper. So he, he actually proved that this uh, uh, eta quotient, eta power is actually a form of CM type, which I am defining here. Uh, what is a form of CM type? So let's take a new form G, the, whose Fourier expansion is this, of certain level and certain weight is said to be a form of CM type if there exists an imaginary quadratic field K, such that the pth Fourier coefficient uh, vanishes for every prime P, which is inert in K. So uh, this is not uh, say in, discovered by me, it was already pr proven by Sir that if I take k to be this uh, imaginary quadratic field q adjoined with root minus g, and we'll do with needful. I'll explain that. Now let's fix the ideal frac f, the ideal f generated by root minus three inside the ring of integers. And we define a group homomorphism C from the group of fractional ideals of K co prime to this fixed ideal F to the non zero complex numbers in the following manner. How will we define the group homomorphism? So, if uh, A is any ideal co prime to F, 
I can always choose a generator alpha of A such that alpha minus one belongs to F. And I'll define C of A to be just the cube of this generator alpha. Once I define this, it's uh, not very difficult to verify that this is a group homomorphism. Once I define this group homomorphism, I'll uh, form this series, phi k c z, I'm naming it, uh, sum over all uh, co-prime co ideals, uh, all ideals A co-prime to F, and uh, coefficients will be the C of A, this C is the, that group homomorphism, and then Q raised to the norm of A, norm, the ideal norm. And now you can easily verify here. So if P is, uh, so you uh, to verify that it is a, okay, so you can easily verify that this is a form of uh, CM type. So this is, first of all, this is a Hecke eigen form that is given by a general res result. Again, uh, I think it was proved by some other mathematicians before sir, but he mentioned it as a lemma in this paper. And uh, it, 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 it actually is a, that, that result says it is a Hecke eigen form of a certain weight and level and how this comes it's all included in the general result and to verify it is a form of CM type let's see let's so you have to basically verify that if a P a prime P vanishes in this K uh, Q root minus 3 then that uh, coefficient has to vanish now if uh, P is an inert prime sorry uh, uh, inert prime so if P is an inert prime, you can easily verify that there is no ideal of norm P because uh, that will, uh, any ideal whose norm will involve P as a prime factor has to involve it as a, you know, even power of P since P is inert. So that coefficient will vanish. So we are sorted out here regarding the form of CM type thing. And more importantly, this uh, for CM, CM type form is actually exactly equal to need eta power eight three z, and that is what we needed. See, p nine n we had eta power eight three z, and we have proved that that is equal to a form of CM type. And let's write the Fourier expansion a bit. Now, once we write it here, then I can now just compare the coefficients mod three. So P99 is congruent to S3 and plus one mod three. And by the property of, uh, you know, by the multiplicativity of, you know, Fourier coefficients of Hecke eigenforms, I can say that mod three, this is the product of S e power e, where e varies over all primes dividing three and plus one. Now, once we get this to study three divisibility of B9n, uh, it's uh, just, it's enough to study three divisibility of these guys. So to study that, let's, uh, get uh, straight these uh, facts. So for an odd prime P different from three, it can be, it is our easy uh, conclusions that P is totally split in K if and only if this result out, this is the legendary symbol. If and only if P can be, you know, written as a binary quadratic form, primitive form of discriminant minus 12. This is the only uh, primitive binary quadratic form of discriminant minus 12. And once you write P in this form, you can easily prove that P is congruent to one more three and you can go backwards as well. And also note that two, the prime two is inert in K. Now having said that, we'll have two cases for prime P not equal to three. First case is P congruent to two more three. In that case, from here, you can easily see that if P is congruent to two more three, then P will be inert in K and for inert primes, there is no ideal of norm P raised to the E for odd E. Hence, the, the, that corresponding Fourier coefficient would be exactly zero for odd E. And for even powers of P, this is the only ideal. The ideal generated by P raised to the E by two is the only ideal with norm P raised to the E. And by definition, the, that corresponding Fourier coefficient will not be congruent to zero mod three as P is not congruent to zero mod three. Hence here in this case, this is the only uh, possibility we have that if the order of P is, uh, if the power of P is E, order of P in three and plus one is E, uh, sorry, is odd. And the next case is P is congruent to one mod three. If P is congruent to one mod three, you can write P as X squared plus three Y square and you can, you know, without loss of generality, choose X to be congruent to one mod three. Yeah. And, yeah. Time is up. 
Okay, uh, okay. Um, it's just the last slide. I'm almost done. Can I have one more minute? Okay. Yeah. So SP. So the, we'll have two prime ideals. Uh, two ideals lying above P. So I can write SP SC of this and this and this is these are simple calculations. So you can get SP is congruent to two mod three. Also, this is a easy conclusion and using this again by properties of Hecke eigenforms, I can prove that SP square is actually congruent to zero mod three. And having these three results with mathematical induction, I can easily uh, prove this result and hence the result follows. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Are there quick questions? Yes, I, can I ask a naive question? I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. you, you, the relations are somewhat reminiscent of Ramanujan congruences, right? Yes, yes. yes. And uh, I suppose you know that uh, there are now combinatorial proofs of those using what is called the crank of a partition and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, yes, Python, yes. Python, Carvan, and such people. Yes. Have you thought of something similar for your congruences, which are probably more complicated? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I haven't uh, looked into that approach yet, but I'm aware of uh, that approach as well, and I'll probably start soon to look into that. Thank you for your view. All right, uh, thank you. And uh, let us uh, clap for uh, Vinash, uh, at least virtually. <laughs>